While that Hyperloop 1 test hit a cool 400 miles per hour on a short track, you may have missed the smog detecting pigeon, the Kickstarter for robot hipsters with handlebar mustaches, and the cheapish water drone to get your Jacques Cousteau on. Welcome to In Case You Missed It, where the deepest place on Earth, the Mariana Trench, is still a big mystery to us. However, new underwater robots mean we get to see amazing things there, like this jack-o'-lantern jellyfish. What else lies in this nearly seven mile deep trench? I think you know. But you could also find out for yourself. Oh yeah. Robots are expensive. That's why some Stanford grads started a water robot company called Sea Drone. It's designed for fish farmers who need low cost tech. The robot is controllable by a tablet app and streams HD video back, all for about $3,000. It's supposed to be a fairly stable underwater drone compared to some of the more difficult and expensive ones out there, but it won't be widely available until the end of the summer. Here's hoping we don't annoy sea life as much as we annoy birds and people with UAVs. Doctor Who fans know that Cyberman did not always look so tough. This one is named Eric and was first built by a pair of World War I vets back in 1928. It could move its arms and head as well as stand up on its own and even understand some verbal commands. The first Eric mysteriously vanished at some point over the years, but the Science Museum in London wants to rebuild it based on archival photos and some information. The museum launched a $50,000 Kickstarter campaign to get her done. Wait, what do you mean that's not a Cyberman? This is? You are not compatible. Maybe that's where he went. We all know we should be concerned about air quality, which is why Kickstarters like this one for an air checker, not even a purifier, are doing so well. But that's just in your home. It doesn't even address what's happening in the great outdoors. That's why an air quality group brought attention to the cause by outfitting pigeons with tiny pollution measuring vests. Just look at them, hung up with their own pigeon name tags. Isn't Coco staying spelt? The birds flew air quality check missions for three days, again, while wearing these vests. Plume Labs is still releasing data from the test too, now that humans have also volunteered to wear sensors to check for nitrogen dioxide, ozone levels, and all the rest. Key takeaway, whoo, whoo. And finally, artist Taba Auerbach made a beautiful pop-up book that's about 100 times better than anything you had as a kid. Do want. <laughs>